Last offseason, Kevin Love was at his lowest point. Ranked as the worst contract in the NBA through temper tantrums that made his own fans hate him. Then somebody said something so nasty, even LeBron called to get his back. LeBron called me, same thing, and was like, yeah, that. You never, you know, that's something that should never be said, regardless of what was said on either side and all of it. You just never do that. And that's what Melo had to say, too. I saw Melo a couple days later. He's like, nah, nah, him. Kevin Love needed to prove that guy wrong this season. People credit this comeback with his new role off the bench or all the new talent around him, but a little revenge goes a long way. This video explains who Love was beefing with this offseason, but more importantly, is his career back for good or will he fall off a cliff again? The story actually starts before he got traded to Cleveland. People forget how dominant Kevin Love actually was. He was the Timberwolves franchise player before Carl Anthony Towns. They drafted him the fifth pick out of UCLA in 08. And by the way, have you seen what the Lakers owner Jeannie Buss said about Kevin Love? Just met Kevin Love from UCLA slash Timberwolves. He may replace Tony Parker as the hottest guy in the NBA. <laughs> Damn. I mean, if you said that today, you're gonna get canceled. But, dreamy looks aside, he was really good at basketball. He averaged 26 points and 13 boards in his fourth year with back-to-back all-star games. No wonder LeBron wanted to get Kevin Love for Andrew Wiggins in 2014. Now, being the third wheel behind LeBron and Kyrie was not easy, but the sacrifice was worth it because he got that ring. And I wouldn't change it for the world. Like, I, I learned a lot about myself. Like, I could I could have gone on and had more all NBA careers. I could have been 25 and 10. I could have done like a hundred percent. I don't doubt it for a minute, but like trading that to winning a champ, like you can never take a championship away from myself or, or the guys that we had. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. And look at the hat that Kevin Love was wearing there. Man also has an Olympic gold medal from 2012. And that's where this drama comes in. Because in an effort to rebuild his reputation, Love volunteered for Greg Popovich's gold medal team in the summer. But wait, rebuild his reputation? Yeah, I forgot to mention, Kevin Love turned into a complete jerk after LeBron left. The Cavs signed him to a four-year $120 million extension and immediately regretted it. Love could not handle the losing. During the rebuild, he became the worst teammate in the entire league. First, they hired John Beeline from college to be the head coach, and they drafted Colin Sexton. Beeline had no idea what he was doing, and Kevin Love didn't really want to help. An anonymous player told The Athletic, guys drowned out his voice, and when guys start searching for the next in line for help, I believe you've lost him. A smart reporter connected that quote to Kevin Love. He was the only player who didn't come out and support John Beeline after the quote. Then another report ripped Colin Sexton. Throughout the organization, the line on Sexton from vets is that he doesn't know how to play. Ouch, I wonder which vet said that. Oh, it was Kevin Love? Yeah, Colin Sexton pretty quickly liked a tweet that said, Kevin Love contract, heist to the century. Things are getting spicy. And he was frustrated on the court too, stomping around, throwing the ball at Chetty Osman. Then he slapped the ball inbounds, leading to a Raptors bucket. Oh, and did I mention throwing a shirt in Jeff Green's face? Not Uncle Jeff, Kevin. He's so likable. So Kevin Love became the most hated man in the NBA with an untradeable contract and he needed a fresh start. That is why he called to try out for the Olympics. Love's been a part of USA basketball for as far back as like 2009. Gold medal in 2012, world championship in 2014. I think he figured if I can be that vet on this team that helps them win a gold medal, it'll rehab the reputation that I've completely destroyed. The problem was his health. During those three horrible seasons after LeBron, Love missed 116 of 219 games. Dude was always injured. But he called Jerry Colangelo, the guy who runs USA Basketball, and was like, let me try out. I think I'm ready. Well, it was pretty obvious pretty quick he was not. 
The USA got embarrassed against Nigeria, a team they had beaten by 83 points in the 2012 Olympics. Love went 0 for 1 in that game and didn't even see the court in a loss to Australia. So with Team USA getting slammed in the media and by fans, Kevin Love said, all right, never mind, I'm sorry, I'm gonna go home, and he blamed it on a calf injury. But the guy who runs USA Basketball blamed something else trying to save his own butt. Jerry Colangelo threw Kevin Love under the bus to the media. I didn't think Kevin Love was going to play. I, didn't, I wasn't even sure he had much left to play. He reached out to us and said he was in shape. He said he felt he owed us one. And on the basis of that, you know, we're looking at someone with international experience who could, who at one time was a heck of a rebounder and could still shoot the ball, you know, being like a 12th man on a roster. Well, it didn't work out. He wasn't in shape. And he was way behind as it turned out. So you move on. Call it a mistake. Saying Kevin Love has nothing left to give might as well be telling NBA GMs, do not give this guy another contract. He is completely washed up. That is why LeBron James and Carmelo Anthony and a bunch of other guys called Kevin Love to have his back. Colangelo could have blamed the calf injury for why Kevin Love played so poorly, but to put the entire Team USA situation on Kevin Love to save his own reputation is awful. So Love had something to prove coming into this season, but his comeback wouldn't have happened without one other phone call. Coach JB Bickerstaff went to Kevin and asked him to come off the bench this year. And he wasn't too sure about that, but he called his old teammate Channing Fry. Fry told him, this is a great idea. Instead of spotting up in the corner like he had with LeBron and Kyrie, Kevin could lead the second unit and show that he can still be the focal point of an offense. So he's playing fewer minutes and he's leading the young guys by example. Yeah, we're the Cavs and they're the Bucks or the Heat, but if Kevin's not scared, the young guys aren't scared. He sees the game a lot more slowly than Darius Garland, Evan Mobley, Jared Allen, and he can show them what to do while he's in the game. Love is now having his biggest impact on a team since the Cavs last went to the finals, but he's playing the fewest minutes of his entire career. Now, I'm not gonna say he's gonna win six man of the year. I do think that Tyler Hero's got that thing pretty locked up, but next season he's on an expiring contract and could find himself on a contender. Then I think he's gonna phase into like his Andre Iguodala years, an affordable vet with championship experience that every team is gonna want. And maybe him and LeBron James can team up again. We already know that LeBron will call up Kevin Love because clearly they're still friends. And I know that LeBron scored 56 and they beat the Warriors the other night, but this season has been going horrible. And I make the case in this video why they should trade LeBron James before it's too late.